Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL and Metro DC. Also, Mark Levine, Democratic strategist, a former top lawyer to Congressman Barney Frank and talk show host on Pacifica Radio. This week, lawmakers are back to work on Capitol Hill and bickering again on immigration. You know, uh, the president is threatening uh, to take unilateral you know, action uh, on immigration. Uh, even though in the past he's made clear he didn't believe he had the constitutional uh, responsibility or authority to do that. And uh, I'll just say this. Uh, we're going to fight the president uh, tooth and nail if he continues down this path. Republicans don't want President Obama to take executive action on the issue, but Democrats are showing their support. What we want the president to do is to act big, act bold, and act broadly, and act soon. All right, Mark Levine, should Obama use executive orders to get something done on immigration? Wouldn't that further divide the parties, though? Oh, absolutely he should. He should use executive orders unless and until the Republicans decide to pass an immigration bill. Look, a bill, a law, is stronger than executive authority. Everybody knows that. The Senate passed a strong bipartisan immigration bill, one that's actually pretty harsh on the new immigrants, passed uh, by a very large margin of Republicans and Democrats, and the House won't take it up. Take up the bill, take up something else, until until the Republicans well, act on immigration, I, I the, the spirit, president has to act. The spirit of bipartisanship after the election, I guess it lasted only six days, and the compromise that Obama talked about, I guess that lasted even less, maybe four days. But, Jack, you where are the Republicans? The party of no just really hasn't brought anything well, forward. Well, first of all, we're proud in many ways to say the party, to be okay. the party of no, because unless we get a good immigration bill, we don't want any immigration bill. Why don't bill. you pass any immigration bill, Jack? Because yeah. unless we get a good one, we believe in Why don't you court. write your own? Why don't the Republicans do something? If they're not going well, to act, I've, President Obama should. The last time I tried writing my own bills, uh, Mark, the country didn't like it, so I don't do that anymore. Why but does it Speaker Boehner do Let it? me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Do you really know, do you really know, Mark, what they're doing? He's disabling part of Homeland Security. The 12,000 border what? agents responsible for deportation, the president with this is literally disabling those people. What he's doing has consequences far beyond just deporting Mexicans and Central Americans like people think. This could could impact deportation of terrorists. It could oh, import deportation Jack, of radical Arabs. Jack, they can't it's have a national a security issue. Jack, he's only restricting it to people who've lived here their entire lives, a long time, decades, and haven't committed any crime. You it's know more what than that, Mark. the executive order is. This but is simply selective prosecution. Jack, wait done. up. Some Republicans, Jack, say they'll cut funding in retaliation to an executive order, but the last time they did that, it forced a government shutdown. Is this the right move for the GOP, Jack? Yes. I didn't think it but was. Forcing are you going to cut funding? Yes, and I think on two fronts, Morris. We have to. We're going to have to have a government showdown and a shutdown anyway because of the health care thing. Come February, we're going to put a repeal provision of the entire Obama health plan in an appropriations bill, and we're going to take the president on in a game of chicken. It's time to do that. McConnell will be pressured to do that. Boehner will be too. Uh, we might as well do the same thing with immigration. We're going to have to do it anyway. I think as you get into the spring, you're going to have one possibility of shutdown after another. Maybe even in December, if they take up this omnibus approach bill, maybe even in December we could have a shutdown prior to Christmas. All right, there you go. It's like a giant game of chicken, and each side is waiting for the other to blink. One lawmaker says the drama could be avoided if the, if the House would just vote on the bill already approved by the Senate. Today, tomorrow, next week, we could dispose of the need for the president to take any type of executive action on immigration if the House of Representatives would just unstick its gears and let us vote in the House the way we're supposed to on improving our laws. Mark, do you think a vote is likely during this lame duck session, or could we be facing a government shutdown over immigration? Well, the Republicans love to shut down the government. People seem to forget when you vote for Republicans, you're voting for a dysfunctional government. They shut down the government last time they were voted in. They're going to shut down the government this time. There's nothing Republicans like more than to basically disable our government. Although That's Mitch what McConnell, they're going to do. Let me tell you Mitch McConnell said he would not shut down the government. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see McConnell's if people like, like Jack get their way or, or whether Mitch McConnell gets his way. At the end of the day, if the Republicans want to do something on immigration, 
immigration, I got a hint. They should do something on immigration. Pass a bill. Let's negotiate. By refusing to do anything, they're f forcing the president to do something you while see, they do nothing. You see what's going on here, Morris. The president can't pull a Bill Clinton. The president is not a centrist guy. He's a left-wing fringe guy. He can't <laughs> pivot. He can't pivot and triangulate the way Bill Clinton did in 20 years ago. He can't do in 1995. The only thing he can do is run way over here to the left. It's not possible for Obama to compromise because his philosophy is so extreme and radical. There can be no compromise. Obama probably feels that his chips and the Democratic chips are so far down that they might as well do a showdown. The only thing that can do in December is help him, he figures. So let's just have all out war. O uh, only that's what Jack the president Bergman. wants. Let's move what? on to another topic now. The Republican okay. base is also unhappy over the new climate change agreement between the U.S. and China. I was particularly distressed by the deal. Apparently, he's reached with the Chinese on his current trip, which, as I read the, uh, the agreement, requires the Chinese to do nothing at all for 16 years uh, while these uh, carbon emission regulations are creating havoc in my state and other states around the country. The deal between China and the U.S. is designed to help prevent more damage to the environment and stop global warming, something the science community agrees on. Jack, why does the GOP see this deal as a bad thing? Well, it's for, for exactly the reason McConnell said. It requires no action for 16 years on the part of the Chinese. And after that, really only minimal action tiered in. This could go on for 50 years with China. Obama has essentially agreed to nothing. The bottom line on global warming, Morris, is this. Even for people who believe in it, there's very little point to the United States doing anything if China and India will do nothing. So why should we hurt our own economy when China and India are accounting for so much of the world's pollutants and causing so much of this problem, there's no point for Obama to unilaterally take action against his own country. Which is why we have this deal, which is why Republicans should love this deal. Republicans have said, you know what, we'll destroy our environment, it's no big deal, we can't help because China's doing it. But now China is agreeing to stop their emissions In as well. In 16 years. Their people are suffering from years. pollution. No, it's In a non, years. these are non-binding targets for both countries, by the way. <laughs> They're non-binding for us and for them. <laughs> and China, yes. if you talk to the Chinese people, they don't want pollution in their cities any more than we want it in our in ours. It's something that's a win-win win for both countries. Don't you see the problem? The problem is we already have all these Obama EPA regulations. We already have a whole slew of binding regulations on us. For the president to go to Beijing and agree to something non-binding, that leaves us already living by a host of regulations. They're already putting regulations in place. Switching Jack. gears. Open enrollment starts this weekend for the Affordable Care Act. But instead of a broken website that's making headlines, it's one of the key players behind the health care bill. Jonathan Gruber, an architect of Obamacare, is under fire for his comments about the American voter. Lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. And, you know, it's the second best argument. Gruber has since tried walking back those comments, but Mark, how damaging are they? Well, first of all, we got to remember who Gruber is. He's not an architect of anything. He's one of hundreds of economists that help score and find out how much this thing would cost. He didn't design the bill. He didn't oh. write the bill. So let, oh. let's, let's not Pelosi pretend he's a big player. Now never met but, the guy, although in, Nancy does know who he is. Everybody's distancing I'm sure she knows now. who he is. He's, this he's is an economic Saturday consultant. Night Live. Here's, know, the, here's the thing. Now they're uh, disowning Gruber. Say, now they want to disown yeah. the guy that wrote the bill. I mean, they... they Jack... They, Everybody people, built him up, and now they disown him. Now, people you know, if you in like your Gruber, you can keep him. Obviously, they don't want to keep him right now. <laughs> people, look, all, what did he do? He told the truth. People in Washington <laughs> do all kinds of things they don't tell the voters. Republicans removed millions of voters from the voting rolls. They'll tell you in private because go they don't want blacks and young people to vote. I, but in public, they claim it's voter I'm fraud, go back. which is laughable. Mark's they, into voter fraud. Politicians no, I'm do gonna this go all back. the time. Morris, I'm going to go back and find tape of Mark three years ago building up Gruber. And I when never, I, and I, when I I find never heard of Gruber. Gruber. Come back and play until, it. Until this week, I never heard of Gruber, and I never spoke about him. You can't find that tape. Well, I know that Republicans are going to have a field day with this. They already have on talk radio all week. This, this, this issue is not going away, wouldn't you say, Mark? I mean, I, I, I think it's silly. They're, they're I think it's silly. You know, I mean, look at when Rush Limbaugh said he wanted the country to fail. He wanted Obama to fail. We could say he's the architect of the Republican. Uh, you know, he, Rush Limbaugh has a lot more power in the Republican Party than this no-name guy who I'd never heard of before. Jack, final word. 
Oh, Morris, I think the, the, the bottom line on all this is we've got to repeal Obamacare. I don't care what Gruber says or what anybody else. That's not going to happen. How about parts? You, how about parts? Well, the I, medical device tax, you're not going to repeal the whole thing. It can't well, happen. I'm not so sure. I think Republicans have the upper hand right now. I think, we, I think now, because the country is swinging our way, because the voters are behind us, we can put something, we can put a full repeal provision <laughs> in an appropriations bill. We can force Obama to a shutdown. Oh, you're dreaming, Maybe Zach. as early you're as dreaming. March. Maybe you're as early dreaming. as March. I know you want to raise health care costs. I know you want poor people not to have health insurance. That's really vital for some reason that people with pre-existing conditions have to go without health care in America. I don't know why it's so important to you, but President Obama, in one word, will destroy your hopes. It's called veto. Jack, the title of your new book, Swinging Our Way. It'll be out of paperback <laughs> soon. Jack Berkman, Republican strategist. Mark Levine, Democratic strategist. The best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank you, Morris. Thank, Thank you, Morris and Jack.